talks about it like that. Jason, right? vulnerability yes. is yeah. one of the most underused assets yeah. for yeah. copywriters marketing themselves, positioning themselves, marketers in general positioning themselves, but then also for uh, client work. This is Jason Kanigan, the president of Sales on Fire, and I'm really happy to be doing an interview today with Oregon super copywriter Mark Pachetti. Mark, thanks for joining us. Cheers, man. Appreciate it. It's been a couple months since we started talking about this. I think we started looking at it back in uh, October. Yeah, it's easy yeah. to get buried under work. Yeah, <laughs> and that's a good problem. Yeah. I just want to kind of make a point to any newbies out there that you might have to book stuff ahead of time. I've had to book, book uh, plenty of interviews ahead of time. Um, sometimes three, four, five months ahead. So It's a good problem to have, and it's a problem that you want to start thinking about having right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Mark. Uh, and the people who are serious about booking those uh, interviews or appointments so far ahead in the future, it may seem like a long time to you. To them, it's not. They know the time is going to pass, and they're actually very serious about their calendars and protecting their time in that. If they're booking that far ahead and they're certain about it, they, they're really blocking that time off for you for certain. Yeah, and there's so. also a lot that can be done uh, to prepare a campaign into, you know, fit, getting the product finished, testing it, getting testimonials. There's, uh, it's never a static process. So if somebody's, right. if somebody's reaching out to you a week before launch or two weeks before launch, <laughs> that's a big red flag. Uh, yeah. And a lot of copywriters actually make the mistake of, of of thinking that they need to just rush these people into their schedules, make time for it, and and try to uh, get it done on their timetable, which is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make. It, 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 it You'll never yeah. think of yourself, much less anybody else, thinking of you as anything more than a commodity if you mm -hmm. do that. And, of course, there are times you will do that, but it'll be at a big premium. And right. as we'll right. talk about, Jason, a lot of back end. <laughs> Right, right. So Mark and I have known each other, or about each other at least, I guess, for uh, a few years now. We don't know a ton about each other, but uh, I do business development stuff and copywriting comes into that, and I've been writing since 1994, but I don't do it full time. You were writing full time up to the moment that this interview started. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, finishing up the yeah I'm back right now. I mean, uh, there's... The, the, a lot of a lot of what I'm writing these days is actually content. Like I'm working on a blog mm -hmm. right now. Facebook mm -hmm. um, frowns upon and won't let you uh, send mm -hmm. people to a direct response campaign, a, a VSL. So mm -hmm. you, know, you have to create native advertising pages or content, and huh. to you know to flush out a, a funnel that doesn't quote unquote trick Facebook users into. Yeah being your customer or however you yeah. put it. So there's uh, there's a, a big need, and, I, and you, Jason, you and I have probably seen this on the Warrior Forum, a lot of people differentiating between copy and co uh, content writing, but uh, both are necessary, and mm -hmm. uh, resistance yeah. to that is only, is, 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 is dumb. There's no, it's a, it's a yeah. tremendous selling tool, and uh, you can do a lot with, uh, you know, a, a listed blog, you know, the top 10, the top three, the number one, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. And from the situation you just described with Facebook marketing, there's a blend going on clearly between sales copywriting and, and content copywriting. Absolutely. Content is quickly becoming the front end of a, a, a funnel and is a, an effective, are effective steps in getting to the control, getting to the sales letter, the, the, the VSL, whatever it is. And, you know, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that everybody needs to learn and get comfortable with. It doesn't matter if you're a, a copywriter for hire or you're writing and developing your own products, your own services. These are things that you absolutely need to know. Mm -hmm. Not knowing them will neuter the amount of money you can make. Yeah, I'm in full agreement about that. <laughs> so, Mark, you and I talked a little bit about what we wanted to, to discuss today, uh, and we didn't want to do the same kind of stuff that, that's sort of been churning around about how to make your first buck and get your first client and that. We're, we're well past that. We're tired of talking about it. Mm. And so I think what we agreed on was that we would talk about 
for intermediate copywriters, somebody who's got some experience and is just sick and tired of taking on lowball projects and not being paid very well and, and having that stupid commodity time crunch that you described, mostly because they don't know how to find anything else, mm. any other kind of work, and clients who appreciate them and, and understand that, you know, you wouldn't go to Rodin, the sculptor, and say, okay, I want you to tap out the thinker from this block of marble in, in uh, you know, a day and a half. Get get cracking. <laughs> um, that's that's just a ridiculous sort of thing. So let's find out in uh, in our conversation here from your experience in that what it takes to become a well paid writer. Well, you know, one of the first things I was I would I always what I tell myself constantly is be humble. Uh, a lot of people that you posi- you 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 get yourself positioned to the point where you believe your own hype and. and maybe your performance hasn't quite caught up to it. And so A is just constantly looking for opportunities to help people. And that doesn't mean showing up with a huge chip on your shoulder. It means, uh, so I'm going to give you an example that just happened for me recently. Sure. I was on the Warrior Forum, and one of the banners was uh, somebody looking to hire a copywriter for uh, a motivational speaker, self-help mm. speaker. And I was like, huh, what's this? I clicked on it. And uh, I, I was really drawn in by the energy, the, the vibe that I got from the ad. I thought it was kind of cool. So I, ah, I'll reach out. I mean, uh, I, I, don't, I don't actually have time. And in fact, when I reached out, I said, if not, if this isn't something that is a- appropriate now, I just thought I would introduce myself. Here's a few things that I've just recently done. And, you know, maybe let's talk. Uh, so I ended up getting an interview set up. Uh, he's, uh, he, you know, he's, he's a copywriter. Uh, he, he has his own business going. And he's the uh, name is Launch Manager. His, his uh, label is the Launch Manager for the uh, Motivational Speaker. And we talked and, and created a, a connection and got to know each other a little bit. And you know, I showed up to the conversation, not even necessarily looking to get the gig, but mm. wanting to have a conversation because a big part of this business is developing relationships. You, you, you have to be constantly reaching out to develop relationships, to create new connections. And he had heard of me. I don't, you know, I, I, I wish I asked, well, how, who, 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 who did you hear from <laughs> what they say? And, you know, so we ended up having a great conversation and thing, the conversation quickly escalated to, you know, actually getting real. Is this something that I wanted to do? And it, it just didn't jive just because they really need somebody for full time. But a, a big part and, and but this was, you know, a big time, uh, a fairly big time uh, opportunity that could have quickly uh, escalated to everybody making a lot of money. So. One of the big things is when I say be humble, I don't care how much money you've made for yourself, for other people. I don't care. In, in, a, lot of, in a lot of ways, and even though your track record does make a difference, in a lot of ways it doesn't mean anything. There's, you know, every project is unique. Everybody is unique. And so it's a matter of going into a, a conversation, into a situation. How can I help this person? How can I help this campaign, this product reach the people that it's meant to help? So when I was reaching out, you know, I'm not reaching out, oh, my God, I need to work. I need to make some money. I'm doing it because, huh, this looked interesting. I want to know more and and having a conversation. And communication is so key, Jason. It's so key. I can't tell you how many times I've talked with copywriters and marketers and content writers, and they don't know how to communicate their value. They don't know how to communicate their worth. They They might be able to write well, but in terms of, face-to-face conversations, hey, how you doing, you know, get to know each other, develop a relationship, and, and not come across, a lot of copywriters do kind of, and I am also guilty of this, kind of kind of come across as, uh, you know, aggressive or kind of a prick, I, you know, it's, it, it, to, it's kind of a symptom of, you know, thinking, oh, I, I doesn't matter what you throw in front of me, I can do it, mm-hmm. and so you, you can kind of develop into, you know, that's why I say to myself constantly, be humble. Aside from creating uh, your own website and positioning yourself, obviously, a lot of copywriters forget, you get to position yourself any way you want. You can, cre- you can create and lead any conversation with potential clients that you want. 
and you get to be very specific on who you want to work with. And, right. and you get to do that at every step along the way in your business. You never, ever need to lowball yourself by talking to people who need to, A, be educated on the value of copy, which in most intermediate, intermediate copywriters are above anyways, but still a lot of them still do fall into that pit, pit, uh, that, that hole, that, that bottomless pit of trying to educate people on the value of copy. Never something that you want to do. And then B, not being strategic in how you develop those relationships. The copy that I have up on my website right now has actually performed very well, and it's all about working with people in the long term. And right. and and I have some damaging admissions on there. I talk about how yeah, I failed, yeah. and yeah. being vulnerable was a very strategic and deliberate part of my positioning. And and it is and also what I really believe that in order for relationships to and and for everybody's success to fire in all cylinders, you need to be, you need to at least go into it with a mentality of long term. Something may work right out of the gate, convert right out of the gate, and that's great. Everybody loves it. You're a rock star if you do that, and, mm-hmm. and it's a blast. It's a rush when that happens. Yep. But yep. most often, long, you, you want to, you're, you're thinking long term. You want to be able to adjust. You want to be able to tweak, uh, sometimes even completely rewrite or reposition a campaign. Mm-hmm. And uh, from my experience, people, while they love to hear, yeah, you know, I've made this much money for other people. Here are some examples of campaigns that have crushed it and to build their, build up their confidence you in that way, whether it's just in copy or when you get them on the phone or on Skype and have an actual conversation. They want to hear that you're somebody that will be on their side, on their team, in their infrastructure until – whatever it is they want to do, whatever their goals are, whatever their objectives are, are hit. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's um, a bunch of things that can be sort of highlighted from that answer that you just gave there to, you know, how would you begin to position yourself? I guess is what, what the, the question is the intermediate marketer could ask. I went to reflectionmarketing.com this morning, which forwards to Mark <laughs> and uh, I had to read through it and I actually commented on Facebook about, uh, hey, I'm interviewing this well-known copywriter and he's got this damning admission yeah. <laughs> that, that he has made some failures and who hasn't, but who else talks about it like that? Jason, right? vulnerability yes. is mm-hmm. one of the most underused assets. Yep. For copywriters marketing themselves, positioning themselves, marketers in general positioning themselves, but then also for uh, client work. I'm always looking at what's the story, you know, I, and, and I could be in, and I have other copy written about myself that I could be a lot more vulnerable. I grew up for many years homeless when I was a kid. You know, I went from uh, a, a, what I tell people I have a fourth grade education and, and, it's, and it's a lie. I didn't even finish fourth grade. I got pulled out of school. I had, uh, a, a, I got diagnosed with, uh, a, a, you know, it, it was something and was given uh, a short time on this planet. And mm. I never went back to school. I, I self, I was self schooled. And yeah. so, and then, you know, going from that, we, my, my family moved us and we were homeless for a number of years on Maui. And, um, you know, I, I could go into a, a lot more, create a lot more vulnerability and tell a story mm-hmm. kind of waiting. But th- there's there's always a way to make yourself vulnerable, to be vulnerable, to to be more accessible, to let people yeah. into your world and, and, and create that authentic, emotional, genuine connection in your copy and the way that you position yourself. And even just a little bit can go a long way. You know, again, depending on how you want to position yourself and what conversation you want to have with people. And then when you get right. people on the phone, and, and this is one of the, the biggest mistakes I've personally seen people make, is that they aren't the person in the copy when they're on Skype or on the phone. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. okay, yeah. who, you know, there's, so it creates this big disconnection. Who are you? You know, why yeah. aren't you able to talk, speak, communicate how I just read on your website. Oh, uh, right. you know. so, and, and so, again, it comes down to being real, developing relationships, and, and knowing what kind of working relationships you want. It's not just making money. It's, it's working with people you want to work with, mm-hmm. with products that you believe in, that you want to get out there, right. that you want to sell, that you believe can have a big impact in people's lives. And, and potential clients can feel that. 
when you're when right. you take an interest in and you can immediately put yourselves in their customers or their clients' shoes, that goes a long way. And that, again, it opens up the conversation. And I, I've gotten lots of gigs, probably, not probably, way more gigs not showing people any copy that I've written for other mm -hmm. people, for other clients. Yep. Just by having... I don't show samples either. Yeah, just yeah. by having a yep. conversation, by answering their questions, by... Showing up to the conversation with a vision, not just mm -hmm. answering their questions and talking about cost or the investment. It's going into you know what what I call X-ray vision, seeing through something and seeing the long-term plan for it. And mm -hmm. when you can get people turned on by how you how you interpret what it is they're selling and and the imp potential impact that they can make in people's lives, whatever it is. You know, again, that that helps develop that relationship, and and it comes down to communication. It comes down with being open, being vulnerable, not having that chip on your shoulder so that you're accessible, not talking down to them. Mm -hmm. uh, all those things go a long way, and so you can position yourself with your you, that way in your website, mm. um, or you can just look for opportunities to reach out and contact people. I do both. All right. So you want to. Do your best to make sure that who you are in your web copy matches up with your actual persona. Absolutely. When you really talk to people. And you mentioned, yeah, like pick stuff that, uh, that you do want to write about and avoid the stuff you don't want to write about. I, as a copywriter, have no interest in writing on weight loss, beauty products, <laughs> pick up artist crap. <laughs> I'm just not interested. Yeah. Somebody else can go write that. And when somebody emails me and says, hey, Jason, what's your price for doing this? That sets off two alarms. One, why are you asking for price yet? When we don't even know whether we're a fit yet. <laughs> and two, you know, that's not a topic that I'm interested in. So, yeah. Whereas scientific and testing equipment and software and things like that do interest me. I worked for a health company a couple of years ago, and it, the, they they were – it, it wasn't the best fit for me, and I lost interest in writing health mm -hmm. copy, you know, selling yeah. supplements and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, if we can't be excited about it, no amount of money in the world at the intermediate and, and higher levels is going to attract a good copywriter. No, ex exactly. Gonna have uh, to. Uh, uh, last year, well, I guess it's yeah, I, I guess it's about six months ago, a little more than that maybe, even, I, I forget. But I reached out to uh, Brad Callen. Yeah. Well, I mean, Wait, Fat Loss Factor, that was the number one product, yeah. number one front end product yeah. on ClickBank for a while. Mm -hmm. and, um, it, and, and I reached out to them because one of the things that uh, has made me good at what I do is when I, I like to work with, with people who have their shit figured out, who have their mm -hmm. infrastructure in place. Because yep. when I write copy, I will get data. I'm a data slot. Yeah. If I could own, maybe it's available, dataslot.com, I would buy it. I would have my <laughs> face right there. I love data. I love getting my copy tested and seeing how it actually performs. I'm not going to always say, I'm going to hit it out of the ballpark for you. I mean, obviously, that's what we want. That's always the intention. Right. But it usually takes some level of tinkering, especially for cold traffic. So I reached out to Brad Callen and ended up working, and I am still working with uh, him and Dr. Charles, and we've done a number of campaigns together for their company, Perfect Origins. Mm. And it's it was the kind of thing, and this is what a lot of copywriters could really learn from. Again, no matter how much or how little you've made, it doesn't matter. Uh, reaching out to people and developing a relationship that's brand new mm -hmm. is developing a relationship that's brand new. <laughs> Get that. Yeah. So, you know, I re when I reached out, I reached out to him and we started having a conversation very quickly. I ended up writing some copy for him and, and he prefaced it that it wasn't so much about converting as do you fit into our infrastructure? Are you a good mm -hmm. piece in this team? And I was curious as well because I don't want to work with people that I don't gel with, that I don't resonate yeah. with, that I don't connect with. And so I wrote some copy for them, and it actually converted a little bit. And I did it again, and that one converted even better. And uh, I just recently redid the uh, Cellulite Factor, Cellulite Factor Solution, I think is what they're calling it. And that's starting to convert. So, you know, it's like when you reach out and you – 
you do a small time kind of deal with somebody just to get your feet wet, to get to know each other, to see if you work well with each other. Then you can start talking about, and this is the big word that every copywriter, every marketer that works with clients should always have in their vocabulary, which is back end, royalties, residuals, mm -hmm. passive income, mailbox money, call whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But that is what gives you a lot of power in this business to take on the projects that you want and reject the ones that you don't, even if it's a lot of money. So going back to that project, Jason, that I was telling you about with this guy, Ben, and the motivational speaker, I ended up throwing it over to another copywriter. I, I had quoted uh, something along the line, ten or $12,000 a month mm -hmm. um, to get, you know, and t taking about three months to get a full funnel completed, you know, they're doing the Jeff Walker style stuff. It wasn't the best fit for me, A, because I don't have enough time and they need somebody more full time. And B, I, I just I, I had some objections and it, it just it's, so it, it's not that it wasn't. A, it's a great opportunity. And the, the woman who is the, the mouthpiece of the brand, she's she's legit. She's the real deal. And it's like, I mean, this is something I could sell all day long and it would be a lot of fun, which is the reason why I reached out when I saw that ad on the warrior forum. So a bit, a, but it wasn't right for me and that's fine for a lot of copywriters turning away $12,000 a month is a big deal right now. Right. One of the reasons I turned it down is there was no back end. It's hard for mm. me to invest my time in something that I'm not getting some residual income from. I'm 35 years old right now. I want to be retired when I'm 40. Okay. And when I say retired, I mean just working on my own products. <laughs> well, good. Good goal to have. And, 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 and you might ask, well, why not just work on your own products? Now, well, I do work on my own products. Uh, and, and there's something else right there that a lot of copywriters don't do is they don't start out by creating their own products. If you write copy, you should always be selling something yourself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care if it's an ebook. Uh, I don't care if it's, uh, you know, it's like oh, I've, I've had three projects going and they're in development hell because I never have the time. But one of them is called the law of attention. It's like a play off the law of attraction, but also very different for new age, spiritual, self-help kind of thing. I have one called stripper fit, which is high interval, high intensity training. It okay. has nothing to do with stripping, but look good uh, naked. And then uh, a massage product called the honeymoon reboot. And it, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the, I, I had one done and then the, the mouth, the, the, the face of the brand ended up uh, bailing on the project and – we put a bunch of time and money into it and just never got back to it. But the point is every copywriter should be developing their own and marketer mm -hmm. should be developing their own products and, and having creating passive income from that. Because, again, one of the biggest mistakes is taking on projects that you don't gel with, you don't resonate with or just doing it because you need the money mm -hmm. or even going lower when you should in your rates when you actually should be going higher. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so because again, you need the money. Or the copywriter needs the money. So it's it's a it's a it's a common mistake, and it it, it comes back to to it's a, it, it, you can as a copywriter, whether you're pull or push, whether you're reaching out or you're driving traffic to your website and and getting leads, getting prospects, you should always always be positioning yourself to work with clients that pay you enough up front that you aren't constantly jonesing for work and, but right. also give you a residual. And the, you know, so a lot of people might be a little hesitant to give you that passive income or give you that back end. So that's why you start out. Like I did with Brad Callen, you start out with uh, doing it for small time, small you, you know, a, a nominal fee a investment to see if you guys, to see if you work well with each other. And uh, if you convert, if you perform well, um, that's the that's the best kind of job security. That's when you know right. you know you really don't have to do very much to get people in the door, because a you have long term clients relationships, and b when you do reach out to somebody or somebody reaches out to you, you're following through on that potential working relationship based on is this right for me? Is this right for them? Is this a mutual? Is this mutually good? And does this continue building my passive income? So passive right. income is key. Passive income creates so much okay. freedom. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I just want to summarize something that, uh, that I've heard you say. And it's true in the other stuff that I do as well, whether it's sales training or executive job searches or something like that. The fact of the matter is to get these opportunities, the easiest way to do it, the most effective way to do it, is to stand out. 
to that prospective client and be seen as an individual, not just as another money-grubbing copywriter. <laughs> and in order to do that, that personal relationship that you need to set up is critical. And then your method of doing a small project to begin with, uh, after having obviously some sort of conversation to determine fit, uh, you know, and then and then we're going to confirm it with this small project after that seems to be the method. Yeah, you want to definitely get a sense of who you're dealing with, pre-qualify them. If you don't know them by reputation, which in this business, obviously, it, once you get to that intermediate or maybe a little beyond that intermediate level, it's almost incestuous. Everybody kind of knows everybody and uh, everybody's sleeping together. <laughs> so it's, right. it's kind of, it, it, it gets easier to get a sense of, of who you're talking with, whether or not it's appropriate for you, whether or not it's good, a match for them as well. If I have a really good opportunity on my table, I, I have to look at it from the perspective of the amount of money that I can make on this. Does this even cover the back end that I continue growing with this other project? Right. So if the back end ends up being more than the upfront on this, then it, no matter how much money it is, or the potential back end on a new project, no matter how much money it is, it just it doesn't make sense to move forward with. But the meaningful conversations, that I, Jason, that I've had with potential clients or, or developing new relationships are actually people I've reached out to. Mm -hmm. And that just happens by a successful person on, in any business is always looking for new potentials. Yeah, uh, always be. We've something. always got our our talent scanner. Yeah, on. exactly. And please let somebody competent come along, please. Hmm. <laughs> it's really the the attitude that I have anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So when you see things that you want to act on, uh, you know, like when I act on something, I'll speak personally. I'm doing it because I'm inspired by it, or I get a a, a good quote unquote vibe, and right. I want to see what it's all about. And if it if it's if it turns me on, I'll move forward with it. If it doesn't. You know, usually at the very least, it ends up being a new relationship, a new connection, and um, you never know what can come from that. I've talked with numerous copywriters over the years, and just by opening up the door and, and, and creating a relationship with them, I'll oftentimes get people trying to kick me down work. And that's another great way to get work. Reach out to copywriters. Reach out to good copywriters. And introduce yourself, you know, not spam them, like write real emails, get into the community. And there is a community. Another great way, and I know I'm kind of jumping around here, but another great way that I initially started getting some of those five figure clients was uh, uh, attending workshops and seminars hmm. that, I mean, infinite you can get an infinite amount of clients. And again, that also comes down to being the person in your copy because you, you're, you're, you're communicating your positioning and they don't know necessarily know anything about it, but you know, they've never seen you, heard of you, read your website, but you're kind of doing that in person while also being real and authentic. The, the networking possibilities at some of these events are amazing. I, I, and Jason, I've never even had a business card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't use them either. And a lot of people raise their eyebrow at that. Mm. But it's just not necessary. No, it isn't. Again, it's if you, another sort of a form of spam. You know? Yeah, if you make an impact with somebody, they they they're, they ain't going to forget you. <laughs> yeah. And so what you've been answering, Mark, by uh, by accident here, <laughs> was my next question, which is like, how do you find out what the market's looking for and how do you get yourself in the right spot? And you just went through three or four examples of the right spots to be in. Oh, absolutely. And I started out by kind of asking that reverse engineering that question, who do I want to work with? Because there are mm -hmm. infinite product developers, entrepreneurs out there who need a copywriter to work with. And I wanted to make sure that I was only reaching the ones that I felt like would be a good match for me. In the beginning, I won't, I will admit it. I did kind of prostitute myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love writing copy. And one of the reasons I continue writing copy, A, I see visible improvement in my own work on a month-to-month -month basis, not just in terms of the writing, but the ideas for positioning, hooks, big idea, whatever you want to call it, creating more effective funnels, 
developing deeper relationships. I mean, it all matters in creating your brand and developing your own business. And, 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 and by the way, before I forget, uh, a big offshoot to that is whenever you write copy for somebody, even if you don't have back end on it, take a vested interest in their success. Contact them. How are things going? Mm-hmm. Um, did yeah. you get the sales letter produced? Did you get the video done? Uh, can I take a look at it? Uh, have you worked on some Facebook ads? Uh, oh, well, well, send them over to me. I, I'd love to see what you're doing. Yeah, I, I, I uh, ended up like uh, uh, Chad Tackett. Uh, he did the upsell for the first upsell for uh, Dr. Charles's the cellulite factor solution that I did. And we were going to work together and then it didn't quite work out. But I've been keeping in contact with him because, A, the guy is freaking amazing. I love him. His passion is unrivaled. His work, work ethic is, is fantastic. It's amazing. I mean, the guy is a machine. And he's constantly doing stuff. So it's, it's interesting, again, as a copywriter and as a quote-unquote data slut, to see what, you know, what's going on and, and what kind of results are being generated by what copy. I mean, we're always – in a position to be surprised by what does and doesn't convert. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm-hmm. we think, oh, my God, this is going to crush it, and it fails. And it's sometimes, oh, that sucks. And it, you know. It works somehow. It works. Yeah. So it's always, you know, great to keep in contact with your clients and and really care, really care. You're reaching out not because yeah. you, you're just trying to, you know. Get another piece of the pie. Right? Yeah. You're doing it because you you want them to be successful. And people yeah. can feel that. That that that's that's uh, that's a currency that might be intangible in a lot of ways or metaphysical, unseen, but it's worth its weight in gold, and it can make a big difference in developing relationships or getting referrals, and and just quite frankly, Jason, feeling good about what you do, you know, making sure that people are, you know, sometimes they'll take a misstep, and you can very quickly see it and help them course correct so that they are on the path towards success rather than flopping. And this, this is interesting talking about doing pieces of this and that I've generally run the whole thing myself, Mm. the whole funnel. So that's a different experience uh, than having, than having chunks of it. But uh, the next thing I want to do is kind of get into the head of the somewhat experienced copywriter. And I'm sure you've run into this a lot. You'll see somebody who has obvious talent, but they've got their blinders on and they literally cannot see that next level. They just can't see it. And hopefully what we talk about in this next bit will help them bump their blinders off a little bit and notice that there's another world out there. For example, from what you've been saying, and it jives with what I teach in the sales training side of things and setting up a consistent business funnel, is you choose your reality. If you, if you take charge of it, you can pick your own clients and your own reality, who you choose with, what, what price level you work at, and that. And the world tends to take you at face value. If you leave that to chance, you get, you get the prostitution problem, basically, yeah. <laughs> that we mentioned at the beginning. You're doing projects for 500 bucks. Or so, you know, it's just not enough. And then you're constantly running around looking for more work, and, and you're nervous, and that spills over into your writing. And well, that. it's the so, feast or famine epidemic, isn't it? Right. You know, it's, right. I, I've been there. I have been in a situation, yeah, so have I. I, I, we all have at some point. Yep. I mean, I remember going a couple of years ago, three or four months without work. Mm. And I, again, fortunately had some back end, so I wasn't totally freaking out, but mm-hmm. I wasn't happy. <laughs> Enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially for the lifestyle I like to lead. And I was thinking to myself, and this is something that a lot of people in that position I think can relate with. I'm too good to not have work. I'm too good to not be booked out for the next year. I'm too good not to be working with some of the top product developers. Mm -hmm. And it's frustrating. It really is to know you're good and be hustling to get crap work. Right. When you shouldn't actually be targeting that at all. but, but but, But that's oftentimes what happens, isn't it? It's just, yeah, our self-esteem is so ready to fall down. That you're just <laughs> like willing to take great. whatever you can yeah. get. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. And you start yeah. freaking out, and you make bad decisions. And, yeah. and it is bad. Yeah, it is it very is bad. Very it's, bad decision. It, well, what happens is when you make that decision, it's very, it's scary easy to get caught in that feast or famine cycle. You know, mm-hmm. where you, you, you're charging too little 
to ever get out of it because right. you know you you get the work you do the work and you were so busy that you couldn't prospect and right. so now you have to prospect and then yeah. and you your go, comfort zone your comfort zone is back to that 3000 or 5000 a month or whatever and, and, and that's it that that's Total. that's a uh, if you want to go there that yeah. is a critical piece of the puzzle your yeah. mindset a lot of people are uncomfortable getting paid big money and and guess what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess what? If you're uncomfortable getting eight thousand dollars to write a, a video script, it's going to be really hard for you to connect with those people. It's going to mm-hmm. be really hard because because you're used to hustling. You know, you're used to getting five hundred, fifteen hundred for a, a a script to write a script, and to go from that to eight thousand or fifteen thousand plus back end. That's really uncomfortable. So your your comfort zone is very very small, and the only way to do that is to deliberately step outside of your comfort zone when you need the money the most. Hmm. That is another critical piece, and you could do both. You can get your shit covered now while you're working on being comfortable with take uh, uh, receiving larger amounts of money, but you have to you have to deliberately dive into that process. I mean, it, this is so much about mindset. And, and yeah. you know, it's funny. I was just talking with uh, Rick Duris, another mm-hmm. copywriter we know yeah. from the Warrior Forum. Yeah. I love talking with him. The guy is a gold mine His of voice. information. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's so calm. He's sexy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's very calm. He's very calm, very yeah. self-assured. It, and, and he's, quite frankly, hilarious. But, um, yeah, we were talking about um, selling seminar seats, you know, big-ticket items. And, uh, it's it you know, a, a, a company might, oh, I, let's let's get a newbie and let's mold them. Well, if that newbie has never been paid thirty five hundred dollars to write copy and they don't live that kind of a lifestyle, they don't live in an abundant, affluent lifestyle, it can be really difficult for them to put themselves in the shoes of somebody who easily pays thirty five hundred dollars for a seminar seat. Right. And and so that makes you a liability. That you know when you when you're when you're looking to help entrepreneurs that play a bigger game and you're not at that level in terms of your own relationship with money, it, it's very, very difficult for you to be of help. And right. yeah, in, in sales training, we call this money tolerance. Mm. Uh, and we've been taught things just unconsciously, like our, our mother saying money is the root of all evil, mm. for example. And just thinking like, oh, $500 is a lot of money. It's not a lot of money. No. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. Not to me. Nope. Not to me at all, and I'm no money bags, but it's just not a lot of money. And I was fortunate. My very first job was in the power generation industry, and I was selling these these big power plants. And a little one was 200,000 US, and that wasn't even the accessories that went with it. And that so the projects went, went much higher, and a big one was like five million. So I got used to punching that money tolerance problem in the face very very early on. And what you said about confronting it, deliberately saying, okay, I really need to work on my money tolerance, even though you didn't use that exact phrase, and that relationship with money that you brought up. Deliberately doing that is critical because you need to take those blinders off. Otherwise, like you said, you will, you will not even like repulse the, the high flyers, let's say, as you view them right now, but uh, you'll run away. You'll find a reason to give up on the project or collapse and and just skedaddle out of there and say, no, it's not for me. It's very difficult to be, to have a a state, a a mindset about money that is in the, in the, in the, in the scarcity consciousness realm, you know, that there's not enough. There's not enough clients. There aren't enough clients. There aren't (laughs) enough big clients. And, and to, come from to, to build your business from that perspective. And then when you have an opportunity, it's like it could be punching you in the face. It could be hitting you over the head with a two by four and you won't see it. Right. You won't be, be like, to... take me. I'm right in front of you. Yeah. Bang, or it'll bang. make you so uncomfortable that you will very, very quickly sabotage it because you're bringing, you're bringing a relationship with money into the conversation that, you know, it's like, how here here's a here's a good question for a copywriter to ask himself or quite frankly anybody i'm if if you're making let's say two thousand dollars for a sales letter 
and you're talking with somebody and it makes you uncomfortable. It's like, oh, I, I, I know this is going to take a lot of time. There's going to be a ton of research, a ton of collaboration. I mean, this is going to take me a couple of weeks. It's going to take me a month to get this sucker done. I know that I should be quoting 5,000. I know I should be quoting 8,000. I know I should be quoting 12,000. Plus back end. Oh, but God, it makes me so uncomfortable. Oh, oh, I can't do it. And so, you know, it's like uh, you're you, Jason, I'm I'm you're, we're talking. You have this amazing launch that you want to uh, start. And I'm you're interviewing me as the copywriter. And you're, you're asking me, you know, we just had a great conversation. And now it comes down to money top. So, Mark, how much? Oh, uh, you know, if you <laughs> if, if you feel yourself clinch up your relationship with money isn't where it needs to be to get to that next level. So those blinders that you're talking about, Jason, are very often the relationship with money or what, what did you call it? Yeah, money taller. Money taller. Yeah. So, yeah. And I agree. And the prospect, what the prospect hears when you go, uh, uh, well, um, is air hissing out of the balloon. You've just deflated on them completely. Mm, absolutely, it's done. and and they and they can feel your discomfort. Yeah. It's it's yeah. not it's it, if you think it's not, it's not something it. that they can't feel. Well, stop telling yourself that story. They can feel it big time. They can even feel it on an email. So yeah. it's not something that you can spray some perfume on and it'll smell pretty. <laughs> it's not possible. You have to yeah. dive into that discomfort even today. I mean, in present time, I don't send off an invoice. I don't send off a quote unless I'm comfortable. Unless, mm -hmm. and and very often, I mean, my mentality now is it's always going to take more time. I mean, it, it almost inevitably does. So I'll uh, yeah. put on another thousand. Eh, yep. Put on another percent because I, <laughs> it, it it really does take that much. And yeah. if I learned that in the IT field, at software development. Every time you came up with a number about how long it was going to take, it was going to take half again as long yeah. to do and get the bugs worked out. Absolutely, it always. I mean, I, I'm. Uh, you, you know, when you reached out to me, Jason, and I was talking about a mm -hmm. launch. Mm -hmm. well, we're still not all the way there. Back. <laughs> that was at the end of October. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if I didn't go into that relationship knowing that it was long term knowing that there could be a lot of hiccups. I mean, we've changed our positioning twice. Mm. And I mean, we're, we've got, I mean, it's almost, it's 99% done. We're just waiting on a few things, but in that time we've thoroughly taken advantage of it. It's never been just sitting on our hands, but you know, there's a lot of, there were, a, 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 I've had to turn down a lot of other gigs. And this is again, mm. uh, weighing what you have yeah. to what you want to what's coming in. And it's like, okay, I could very easily say, you know what, this has been dragging on too long. I mean, I, I, I still get paid front end and, and the back end is, I mean, potentially unbelievable. Even if we're way off our mark, it's going to be unbelievable. There's always opportunity. As a copywriter, no matter where you are in your career, there's, you're always going to have opportunity if, if you're playing the game even slightly the right way. So yeah. now there's there's a total yeah for anybody who's listening and is concerned there is a total abundance oh, it's of big clients out there. You do not have to worry. You just here's the thing, two two points that I wanted to highlight here from what we've been talking about Mark. First of all, the feeling that I get from what we've said so far is that an intermediate copywriter's first goal, the very first thing they ought to do is go out there and try to get as fast as they can that five-figure client to prove to themselves, and that's what it is, that they can earn that much money and go through the money tolerance issues and develop that relationship with money and get, get comfortable. The second thing that I'm getting is uh, the answer to the question, how do you demonstrate you're worth the big money? Well, the, the goofy copywriter would come up with a technical answer, and that's totally wrong, throwing uh, samples and, and numbers at, at a prospect. Really, it's actually little recognition symbols and being freaking comfortable yep. <laughs> with money. Absolutely. That, that is actually what's going to get you the, the role. I'll, I'll tell you, yeah. I'll, you're, I mean, nail meat head, Jason. I'll tell you what, <laughs> if, if I'm uncomfortable with making $5,000 on a deal, what does that tell the client? Mm -hmm. It tells them that I don't make very much money. Right. If I don't make very much money, how can I be a good copywriter? How can I be an effective one that's going to help them make a lot of money? I won't. I very likely won't. 
Now, I can feel that discomfort, and and I can go toe to toe with it, and I and I can and I can I could I could do that. I could I could be the person to write the the uh, uh, write copy that's worthy of five thousand dollars and way above that. But you know, at, at some point, you have to make the decision to take that leap, and you haven't done it yet. And you have to create that res- reference point, and you have to shatter old old beliefs. And right. and the only way to do that is to do it. You you don't do it by uh, wanting it. You don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta just do it. And uh, and I've been on that. I've been on those calls, those live calls, where somebody asked, and uh, you know, you quote, okay, it's gonna be eight thousand a month for three months, and gulp, you know, just getting over that, that hump, and getting past that uncomfortableness as fast as you can. Well, absolutely, and and, and, and the world will te- treat you at face value. It absolutely will, and and, to do that. and it's not and it's not just the money money speak. It's the the it's it's your relationship with money. It's it's also your relationship with how good you think you are. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't think that you can, it's it's like one of the things I always ask people is at some point in the conversation, how much money do you want to make? How much money through this campaign do you want to make in the next year? A uh, million dollars, a million dollars. All right. You know, and, and by that point in the conversation, I usually have a pretty good idea of how realistic that is, you know, depending on their ability to drive traffic, which is something that a copywriter needs to be very aware of, by the way. How good is this person at driving traffic or do they have a team that is going to drive traffic for them, you know, and get everything produced in the best way possible so that it can convert. And and as a copywriter, you always want to be protecting yourself and not work with people who uh, don't know how to do that or you don't have the time to teach them how to do that to help them connect with the people, to create the infrastructure, to develop a VSL, to be a sales letter, a full funnel, you know, a a, a website, a full fledged website. You know, it's like, Oh, do you know somebody who can make a website? Ah, maybe, you know, it's, you don't want to get into those conversations too many times because then you write the copy and it oftentimes just doesn't get work right. But anyway, going back to (laughs) what I was saying, it's not just your relationship with money. It's your relationship with how good you think you are. And if 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 you don't feel like you're able to reach that million dollar goals, like am I a million dollar copywriter? Can I can my copy if it's framed right and if the right traffic is driven to the control, the website, can I convert at that level? And that's another reason why people have a hard time with the money side of it is because they don't necessarily believe in their ability to perform or repeatedly perform. And and the and and the here's the thing, and and I I used to have this, you know, uh, belief that oh God, when you reach a certain level, pretty much everything you do works. No, I was that's just not true. You know, this it, it I have seen some of the best in the business today and have conversations with them about it. Miss the mark horribly. I'm one of them. I've missed the mark horribly. You are not a, 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 a slot machine. You know you can't put in a buck, and you're always going to spit out ten. It doesn't always work that way. So immediately take that pressure off of yourself. Now, if you make that decision to take that pressure off of yourself, and you realize that nobody hits it out of the ballpark every single time, charging more money all of a sudden becomes less worrisome because you're you, you're obviously going to go about it that you want to. You're developing the relationship. You're starting to understand the person. You're starting to understand the product. You're starting to understand the market. You're starting to get a picture of what it is that you're going to have to do. And obviously, you have to go through the process of doing it, but you're pretty sure that you have the ability to do it. And so if they want a million bucks, what's that worth? And it's all I thought. How much is it worth to you to unlock the potential of that million dollars? I'm not saying that you're going to get it, but what is it worth for you to do that, to unlock the potential of a million dollars? And if they say, you know, $1,500, so dream on, buddy. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. Like y- you, sir, <laughs> Mr. Prospect, do not have a belief that this is actually going to work. Yeah. And, and, and so it, exactly. And so that, that also brings up a point. Whenever you're talking with somebody or going back and forth with them on email, it, it, they're not interviewing you. It's mutual. It's mm-hmm. very mutual. You are never just, oh, my God, I got somebody. How do I sell them? How do I sell them? How do I sell them? Right. Don't ever do that, ever. Ever. When somebody contacts you, 
your your only intention is to get a sense of who they are and what they're all about and what they're selling and whether or not it's even a conversation you want to have regardless of the money. And once you get into the money conversation, you ask them how much they want to produce to generate as a result of your copy in this campaign. And you reach a number that you feel like this is this is worth my time. Eight eight thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand plus ten percent plus fifteen percent. This is worth my time. Or eight thousand dollars a month plus ten percent. You know, that's worth my time. That is when you can start and and when you really add you know, look up what which is another reason why it's important to that you fully understand how they're running their business how are they how are they driving traffic right. and do they have do they have past success you know success um, because if you're going to take on a project based on the potential for back end you want to make sure that they can get the right eyes on your copy uh, because it, it can be draining and it can be damaging to your confidence and even your reputation to do a project that was destined to fail because of things that you sh- that you could have foreseen from the very beginning. So all of those things are extremely important. That's just as bad, you know, taking on a, a big project for big money and a big potential back end that and, and not looking for all the trademarks of somebody who, you know, whether it's a first time product developer or a serial product developer that never really launches correctly, it, that can be just as damaging as trying to get a project because you're in need of money desperately for 497. Mm-hmm. You know, to take on a lowballing project. That could that could be just as damaging to your confidence and your reputation. So, it goes both ways. And again, you know, am I a copywriter that can produce a million dollars? Well, the answer should be oh hell yeah. And if it isn't, then you need to look at that. If as long as it is, then charge what it's worth. You know, and don't think twice. Don't speak twice. Don't worry about it. Just answer the question very quickly and very, you know, and, and it's okay to say, you know, I need to think about that. That is something I'll say and, and, and legitimately say, it, you know, mean it. I need to think about that and I'll get back to you in an hour. And the answer that you provide, if it's at that level, that proper level, is going to tell you a lot about that prospect, how they react to it. Yeah. Exactly. How they come back at you. Yeah, and they might say, oh, I need, I need something right now. Be, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's not, that's, I, I need to think about it. Mm-hmm. And if they, oh, yeah, absolutely, I mean, which is what most people say, this, you know, it, then, yeah. I mean, I, I've been at an event and talked with networking, you know, going back and forth with this person, with that person, and gotten into conversations where it very quickly gets serious. And so I, I've been in a situation, and I, if so if I don't know exactly, I always quote high. Yep. And sometimes it's even, I want to scare you away high. <laughs> and they just might take and they, it. <laughs> and you would be surprised how many times they do. But yeah. if you do it with your energy, your body, your voice shaking, it doesn't work. <laughs> but if yeah, you do it and you're so looking at them straight in the eye or you're talking on <laughs> Skype like us right now, uh, and you're completely okay with it, okay with either answer, because you aren't in total right. need, then they will feel that. The, it, it, the more you need it, the less you're going to get it. Correct. Yep. And again, people will feel that. Yeah, and they'll back off. Mm. Th- there's a lot of yin and yang gestalt stuff to this. If you push, they'll move back. If you back away, they'll try and move forward to come get you. Absolutely. They're going to want you more. Uh, and that that stuff is, um, I guess you could teach a little bit of it. It's also experience in that. Um, but how that prospect reacts to the number that you quote them will tell you a lot. How they uh, how and vice versa. Yeah. If the, how yeah. the how the pros, how you react to them asking and how they react to you telling. There's right. there's a, such a huge conversation, uh, an invisible conversation happening there that you're both feeling. It, maybe you have the guts to bring it up. Maybe you don't, but you're both feeling it, and th- there's a lot to be a lot to be said about. It. And by the way, if, if if conversation is going well and you get to the money to, to the uh, to the quote, and you know it's like yeah, 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 that sounds good, but it's still not feeling right to you. Take the time to figure out why. Uh, yeah. There's or ask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ask the uncomfortable question. Absolutely. 
Uh, Mark, hang on. Everything seems good. I'm just getting a little bit of hesitation. What's going on? Yeah. All right, yeah. That kind of a question yep. will get you somewhere. Well, I mean, it sounds fair, and I know you're worth it. I've heard that a lot of times. I know you're worth it, but we just don't have – okay, good. I'm glad to find out that you don't have the cash right now to do this yep. with me. And uh, it was after maybe half an hour of us talking, maybe a little more, but I didn't invest a lot of energy into it. Exactly. And, and, and there are also times when somebody might say to you, and, and, and I've had this experience, might say to you, so I give a quote, uh, yeah, you know, I think for the long term that sounds good. However, what I would like to do is start with, and they counter offer, and, you, and, and try, test you out on a sales letter, test you out on a VSL or whatever. And, and usually I would go, mm, no, that doesn't feel right. You know, that's what I'm saying to myself. And sometimes I, I, there have been instances where I've done it, and it's be, it, they, it, because it performed well, became a flourishing relationship. I, I still have back end on situations like that. So you, you never know. And you want to, again, it comes down to the relationship. It's like if you're if you're creating a relationship with somebody that you know I, I just don't really like this guy or I'm not sure if I trust him or you know, <laughs> why would you get involved? Why would yeah. you get involved? Yeah. Or I don't know if you know it's like I'm how do I know if if converts that you're going to pay me my eight percent? If you have that question, you know, good night, Irene. Don't don't do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I create agreements with people, Jason, but at the end of the day, I'm a handshake kind of guy. I don't want to if yeah. if they're if they're not going to pay me, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna come at you. I'm, yeah, I'm, but, but there's the whole reputation in the marketplace yeah, thing. Absolutely, which is huge. For somebody, it's going to go around. Mm -hmm. People are going to hear. So, you know, and, and, and that's also something to be aware of. And, and nowadays, I mean, with, you know, like ClickBank, the JV tools and all that kind of stuff, you can have your whatever percentage, you know, directly deposit into your PayPal account without anybody right. doing anything. So it, the, things are definitely a lot easier. But um, you want to make sure that you're aware of what needs to be done to set those things that you are getting paid and um, you know, sometimes people get too busy. You know, I've been in situations where, Hey, uh, how did that convert? Oh, really? Where's, where's my money? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, sorry. So and, you know, they'll get it in my account that day. But you know, it, 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 I, I personally hate having to chase money. I, mm -hmm. I will only ask once. And if it becomes burdensome on my part, then I just immediately start distancing myself from that relationship. And I'll be mm -hmm. I'll be totally transparent about it, and that yeah. that is also uh, that's you know, always position yourself, and no matter how far along you are in the relationship, whether it's brand new, you're talking for the first time, or you've been working together for two years, always be positioning yourself. And I don't mean that in, the, in a disingenuous way. I mean that and be transparent, be real. If you're feeling something, don't hide it, because it yeah. makes a difference. And you know, I get to the point in my relationships with clients. You know, like the, the person I told you, the, that long launch with the owner and the founder of the company, and it's mm -hmm. a pretty, you know, multi-million dollar company. He and I talk every day. We've become good friends and I'm loyal. I will admit it. Yeah. I have, I have turned away gigs that maybe I shouldn't have. And mm -hmm. in large part because of loyalty. Because I want, because I, I believe in this guy. I believe in what he's yeah. doing. I believe we're going to succeed. And I want to be able to. You need your time freed up to keep working on his projects. Absolutely. And it's a lot of time. Yeah. And not just, and, and by the way, another, another good thing copywriters need to know, very often you're not just writing copy. You kind of, mm -hmm. kind of wear that project manager hat. Yeah. And, you know, you're, you're working with web designers. You're working with the video guy. You're working with the agency you're working with content writers you're 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 constantly strategizing and collaborating about how to build out the funnel i mean there's lots of things that um you're going to be doing very often with people with uh, with projects that maybe you didn't foresee when you took it on mm -hmm. and you just want to assume that there's going to be a certain level of that coaching as well there's mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes a, a level of coaching involved Whenever I work with people, I do what we're doing right now. I get them on Skype. I record it. I interview them. I ask a lot of questions. I listen to it again and again and again and again. Sometimes sometimes the best bits in the copy come from just verbatim, you know, dictating right. what was said in the interview. I mean, um, I've, I've, had, I've, I've had sales letters that 
you know, the, the the whole above the fold was just dictated. <laughs> and <it> worked. Yeah. <laughs> Because they said it in their words, in the market's words. Exactly. And, yeah, it's a great fit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot, you want to work with clients that are a wealth of information for what you're going after. Because, mm-hmm. and our passion, I like to, I mean, and this is everybody's own preference. I like to work with people who are passionate about what they're doing, that give a shit about what they're doing, that, that really believe in what they're doing. That gets me going. And that I will make sure I have your back. If you're just chasing the money, it's difficult. It, mm-hmm. Even if it's a good product, it's difficult for me. Yep. Some people don't care. Some people, oh, you know, I, I, I just, I took on this project for the challenge. Did you like the guy? Eh, not really. He was a dick. Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> that. You know, <laughs> why would you put yourself in that situation? But people do that. Question that jumps into my head. People do Some that. People, Copywriters do it because they they like the challenge. Yeah. Uh, you know, even above and beyond needing the money. So there, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, copywriters that are at that intermediate stage and want to get to the next level, I really do believe if we stripped it all down, it does come down to mindset, their relationship with money, their relationship with believing in their own copy that it's that's worthwhile. Yeah. And if you can really get over that hump, regardless of what you have or haven't done, and you take that mentality, that attitude into your next conversation or you rewrite your own marketing copy, uh, your own copy, your own sales letter, your own VSL, however it is that you're marketing yourself, you're positioning yourself and you go about it and you infuse that confidence into the copy and you are the, again, I'm going to repeat this and I say this a lot and I don't really think everybody quite, you know, gets how easy it is and how much it's overlooked. As the copywriter, as the person writing your own shit, you know, you get to position yourself however you want to position yourself. You get to have a com- you get to choose who you're having a conversation with and you get to lead that conversation. So you don't need to be going after low ballers. They they won't even be attracted to you. They they will know right. immediately that you're out of their league and they need to go on and look for somebody else. Yep. By the same token, the people that that know what they're doing I forget who said it. Dog whistle language. You, you're speaking directly to them. You're, 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 you're singing, preaching to the choir, and yeah. it's just resonating on every possible level. You're copying. They want, and and then what happens? Well, again, they want to get you on the phone. They want to get you on Skype. They want to meet you, and you need right. to be that person in the copy. I'm going to repeat that. I know I said it a few times, but it's so important. That's that. Jason is why the original name of my business, when it was more content marketing, mm-hmm. was Reflection Marketing. My tag was Your Vision mm-hmm. Mirrored. I really believe that getting people's voice, getting people's passion into the copy, was an important ingredient in making it work, and that certainly counts for the for each copywriter marketing him or herself. That you want to make sure that your voice, your vulnerability, your story, your big idea is in there and it's connecting with the people you want to work with. You want to impact. You want to help get their product or service out there and affect the people they want to help. I mean, that's what it's all about. This, and it's, it's, it's also, I always say this as well, practicing the art of unattachment. You know, you write copy, whether it's for yourself or a client, you don't want to get too attached to it because it's easy to be devastated if something doesn't work. And you have to get over that. And that's a, it's just words. It's just words. And that's another <laughs> blinder that yeah. intermediate copywriters and newbies get hit with is they get mm. too attached to what they're writing. They oh, my God, this is great. It's going to, ah, uh, and then it bombs. And it's like, ah, uh, and it's, it, it, you know, you have to keep picking yourself up. And that's exhausting. Just go yeah. about it. The fact, just know that you could write something in a thousand different ways, and you are not limited by this one version of whatever it is that you've done, whether it's for yourself or for a client. And when you do that, right. it makes it so much easier to, you know, this needs to be tested. I mean, it, it's, it's a cliche in this business, isn't it? In marketing. Mm-hmm. It, it, well, is it going to, you know, what do you think? You know, as long as it's competent, yeah, just need to test it. Yeah. What I like about your approach is that you'll, you'll continue adjusting it until it does work. Absolutely. And, and, and again, you, that's why I put look, it all out on the line and say, okay, it's got to work the first time. No. If it doesn't work, you'll adjust. Uh, absolutely. And that's, Throw it uh, out. that's why you want to it, 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 create long-term relationships mm-hmm. that you're able to have transparent conversations about the data. You know, it's like, okay, so you say you put a, a, a VSL on Wistia and you're driving traffic to it and you've got, 
the 5,000 clicks and you're looking at the, the data and you're seeing, oh, wow, I mean, look at the drop off here. I mean, that's just huge. How we, you know, I, I, so you're, you're having a conversation about it and you're seeing how you can either patch up those holes so that you don't lose people and you can get more to the finish line and actually get them to press that buy button mm-hmm. or you have to completely rewrite it. Maybe the positioning was off. Maybe you were just wrong and that's okay. As long as you're willing to adjust, it, it, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know, there's going to be some with regularity. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's going to be the, uh, the of- stock trading hmm? uh, program, the stock trading software uh, launch that I did back in April last year. We did uh, a three-part series to it, and the first couple emails that I sent out didn't do very well to get people onto the list, <laughs> and I was like, ah. Oh. And I could have let that be a crushing thing, and and who knows, maybe even an overreacting client would have fired me or something. I don't know. But instead, we both looked at it and said, "Okay, this we, we've done it wrong. We we did our best. Uh, the positioning didn't work, and we adjusted it, and that ended up being a six hundred thousand dollar launch in a week." And that's a perfect example <laughs> of what yeah. happens when you just adjust. Mm-hmm. And there's so many ways to do that. But you can't do it if you if you like you you put all of your blood, sweat, and tears into an email or a piece of copy, and you're just like, "This has to work." Oh my God, I've spent so much time on it, and then it doesn't, and it's oh my God, my life is over. You know, I've I felt that I've I've yeah. I've put yeah. that much energy into a piece before, and mm-hmm. and I don't do that anymore. In fact, Jason, it's funny because I have. A reputation with clients of you know, we'll, we'll be talking about something and I won't remember what's in the copy. Mm. I don't. I'll read copy that I wrote and didn't know I wrote it. Right. Be- you moved on. I moved on. <laughs> I I've I release it and let go. You know, and yeah. and I and I've had to develop that kind of relationship with my copy because I it 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 it, it doesn't matter how good I think it is. It either works mm-hmm. or it doesn't. It either converts or it doesn't. It, e- it either resonates to the target market or it doesn't. If it doesn't, I don't. It doesn't matter how good I think it is. My opinion is irrelevant. And mm-hmm. and so, and so even though I'm, you know, I might feel good or I might have a level of satisfaction when I'm done writing something, and it's good to have that. It's important to uh, just let it go. Let it let it let it get tested and pivot adjust if necessary and if it works great if there's ways that um it's converting really well but you're you're looking at the data and you're like oh we can strengthen it here here and here and you know then go for it and that and again that's just another reason to work long term and by the way jason before we i I started this conversation you had also talked about downtime one of the biggest things that a successful person does is have downtime and if you are a workaholic and there's nothing wrong with that uh, if that's your 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 ethic, your work ethic, but downtime is such a big part of not getting burned out, a and and b continuing to have healthy relationships with people. I mean, if you're mm-hmm. tired, you're you're burnt out, regardless of if you're doing good, effective work or not. It, it, I mean, what's the point? You know, what is the point? Yeah, you're gonna be stressed out and grumpy in that. I know in my own business, uh, this. Last year around this time, I made some huge changes uh, to my pricing level, to the number of clients that I wanted to deal with every month, the amount of money that I wanted to make. I don't, <laughs> but, yeah, that downtime is critical. It's critical, and oftentimes that's where your best ideas come from. I mean, there's always a ton of back processing that is going on after you have immersed yourself in a client yeah. collaboration and researching and getting your notes down and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's your unplugging from all of that that oftentimes comes the big idea, the, oh, shit, I need to get in front of a computer as quickly as possible. And then you get there, and it's just like magic. It flows out of you effortlessly. You can't do anything to stop it. Mm-hmm. You know. So, And that's where you want to be. That's when this business the flow. is, yeah, mm-hmm. the flow. You're in the flow. I, you know, I, I, I often say that when I – my best copy – I know when I'm writing copy that's going to convert because Mm -hmm. I can be sitting there typing it and have a conversation with you. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's like coming through me. I, I call it channeling. I even wrote a a blog on my mindset blog about it being the the Akashic 
records, you know, with the, the okay. you know, yeah. It, it, yeah. it's this when you get really connected with the product, the audience, the owner, the passion, the energy, the the funnel, the positioning, the hook, the story, and it's you know all those ingredients are you know like a stew, you know, uh, coming together, and and you you and then you walk away from it, and you allow all that to just marinate in the background of your mind and then all of a sudden boom hello you can't yeah, get it comes out of the hopper yep <laughs> at two in the morning mm. <laughs> yeah, <don't really. laughs> or in the shower oftentimes the most shaving. inconvenient times you know honey i love you but i need to go yeah. <laughs> and they just don't understand mm-hmm. so uh, you know what's really interesting about this uh developing um your own marketplace as an intermediate copywriter uh, from my perspective anyway, is how self-created this is. This isn't, these are the cards you were dealt with this month or, or something random happened or something. This is entirely self-created. And you can flick the switches and turn the dials at any time. You can change that marketing literature on your website at, at any time. You can, you know, as long as it matches up well with, with who you are and you're not lying, <laughs> misrepresenting yourself. Yeah, I mean, it, you can change that, it, and and you can pull in the kind of customers that you want to. Yeah. Bottom line is, you kind of everybody who is has reached that glass ceiling if they're at the intermediate intermediate level or they're at that beginner level trying to get to the intermediate level. They have to audit themselves. They have to see where they're at. They have to have an honest conversation with themselves about what is my relationship with money. How much feels like a lot? Hmm. Yeah. Really, fifteen hundred feels like a lot. Well, how am I gonna not be in the feast or famine epidemic if I can't make enough where I can have an off month? Hmm. Right. That's a big question to ask yourself and to be honest with yourself. Or does my copy, do I really believe that my copy, regardless of past successes or lack thereof, is worth a million dollars, is worth $10 million? If the answer is no, get to a point where the answer is yes. I don't care what you have to do, whether it's creating your own product and again, you should be anyways, or you know, work for only back end or very little up front until you finally get to that place where you go, yep, my copy is absolutely worth that much. And in order to get that potential million dollars or that potential $10 million, here's what I want up front and here's what I want in the back end. And I also realized that I need to develop a relationship. I'm not just, I'm not going to be a hit and run. Yeah. I'm not going to be a, yeah. I'm not, and I'm not going to be a prick about it. I'm not going to act like uh, I deserve it. This is just how much yeah. it's I'm worth to, to create the possibility for that kind of income to be generated. So those things are extremely important. And again, to sit down in front of the computer and get clear on who you want to work with. I want to work yeah. with beach body. I want to work with, you know, fill in the blank. Okay, so there's the archetype of who you want to work with. So pretend that you're just selling to that company or that person and write your copy so it's directed to whomever that is or whatever that is. And there, when I say archetype, there's lots of people, lots of businesses, companies that are in that mold that you will be relevant to, that, they will con- that you will connect with, that you have the potential to connect right. with. And then decide how you want to drive traffic. Do you want to do it like um, – you can post on the warrior forum. You can drive PPC. You could do Facebook ads. Um, you know, flex your content muscles to get people onto your copy. I mean, show them that you don't just write copy, that you know how to create a full funnel. Get them on your auto, you know, build a list. Get them on your autoresponder. Run your business like a business. Don't just try to get, you know, throw a, a, a an ad up or a thread up or, you know, whatever, and try to get a 497 client because that's not going to, unless you're doing it and I've done this to get clients that you're going to work with for the long term. I've, I've, I've had a 497 client that became a six figure client. Mm -hmm. So again, how do you want to grow your business? Reach out, reach out to people. Uh, Nothing wrong with that. Start a conversation. And they are waiting. They are begging for somebody with talent to come along. Please. Always. Yeah. And they will judge you based on the amount of money that you ask for as well. Always. And if it's too low, they if it's too low, and newbies just don't get this. If it's too low, that amount, they will look at you and go, nah, you can't be the real deal. Mm. You just can't. That's perceived value. If you if 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 you're saying uh, a million dollars. Mm, shoot. Uh, can you do 1500? <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. 
I worry. Laughable. It's totally laughable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing when you look back at those moments and you go, oh, uh, oops. <laughs> I think our message today is you have full control. You have total autonomy. And you do not have to do that. Total autonomy. But get real with your relationship with money. Get real with your relationship with your copy. Learn how to be the voice in your copy on the phone, on Skype. Develop relationships. Reach out and develop relationships. Develop relationships with with both product owners and other copywriters and other marketers. Get involved. Create a community. When you do that, you will never be at a loss for business. And obviously perform. I mean, if it comes down to one thing, yeah, you have to perform. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) However, you can be the best kept secret in the world in isolation. So, absolutely, uh, you can. Also- worse, worse copywriters than you are getting more work because they're better at uh, at getting out there and getting noticed. Remember what we said about being seen as a differentiated expert. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I and I I used to be frustrated by that. Oh my God, this guy's making how much? Really? Really? You know, and it would bother me. And I and 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 don't ever do that. By the way. Uh, I again, I've had a rather unconventional uh, education, and okay. I am not somebody who read lots of copywriting books. Mm-hmm. Very few, very little, and uh, oh, for me, a lot of it is diving in as if. You know, it's not even the the fake it till you make it. It's just diving into an energy and trying to embody it. You know, oh, so I mean. It, there's oh, oh, before I even Jason learned what copywriting is, mm-hmm. you know, when I create first created my, when I created my first product, I was using techniques that I had no idea open a loop. Really? Hmm. Never, never heard of it. <laughs> and then when I looked, when I, when I saw it for the first time, I was like, Oh, I do that already. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it, I mean, there's, you know, see what, Really dive into what your natural abilities are. Don't get too caught up with what people tell you you need to do in order to convert. Well, I want to I wanna do this guy's video script style, whatever, UVSL mm-hmm. style, John Benson, whatever. Yeah. Again, uh, talking with uh, Rick Durst, we were talking about writing VSLs, and I showed him a picture, and we ended up writing a blog about it. And I have up on my bulletin board, it says, is it memorable? Mm-hmm. You know, Send me the link to that, and I'll uh, I'll put it up in the post with this. Okay, so everyone can see it. I'll do so. Cool. But is it memorable? Is it memorable? In other words, you know, it's like if you click off of something, thirty seconds later, do you remember it? Hmm. You know, did and and that's one of the things that a lot of when I see some of the VSLs out there that don't succeed, including some of my own from the past, there's nothing in it right away that captures somebody's imagination, captures their full undivided attention that doesn't Mm -hmm. impact them you know it doesn't really you know it's like it's good it's it's, it might be well written the voiceover could be really awesome maybe it was a doodle or kinetic you know whatever it's it's good why didn't this convert because it's not memorable it didn't Mm -hmm. immediately hit the heart of the problem and get them full on board you know whatever so it's like you could in other words I, I came up with that. That was my thing. That's something that I keep in mind when I write. And everybody will come up with their own. And you need to be aware of what that is for yourself. You know, what is it that, what questions do you have to ask yourself? Or what frame of mind do you need to get yourself? Or what environment do you work best in? Figure mm-hmm. all that shit out because all those little things matter. Well, I think we've had a fantastic conversation here, Mark. Um, we're, we're probably well over the hour and 20 minute mark. Yeah. Uh, we should we should be selling this. <laughs> well, I'm, I, uh, I apologize for going all over the place. That's no, I'm not, I don't think we went all over the place. I think we gave an instruction manual on exactly the topic oh, that, uh, that we picked to talk about, which is if you're an intermediate level copywriter, what do you do to get above that level and, and get into the expert level? Mm. And how do you do it? And it's not about technical competency mm. and, and, at all. And, and if I were to leave everybody with one thing, it was this, you can change your position and you can change your copy. You can, you can change the way that you are, you perceive yourself and you're perceiving the marketplace today, right now. So whatever mm-hmm. circumstances, whatever story you've been telling yourself doesn't matter. It, it's what's past mm-hmm. is prologue. Now, what do you want? <laughs> yep. What do you want? What do you want? Who do you want to be? How do you want to be perceived? Who do you want to work with? How do you want to help them? Answer those questions. 
sit down and write that copy, right? Be that person. Start reaching out and developing those relationships from that perspective. And amazing things are guaranteed to happen. You have 60 days or your money back. Yeah, and I, you can't see me, but I am nodding my head vigorously <laughs> in agreement to everything that, that Mark just said. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, Mark, people can catch up to you on com, and that will send them right over to your conversation on what you look for. Awesome. And how you work, and I think that's fantastic. I also did a bit over an hour I had a discussion recently with the two other sales trainers. So there were three sales trainers, all, and those guys were older than me, so highly experienced here. And I had a conversation about fit, and we talked a lot about fit. Mm. We, I don't think we called it that, really, uh, in this interview today, Mark. We talked a lot about fit today. But the three of us as sales trainers went into so much depth in fit. Anybody wanting more about that topic, I'll link it in there as well. Awesome. And like I said, we could we could charge for what Mark has just shared with us here. And we, uh, and and we could dive way, because, in, way more into it. I mean, there's, there's yeah. so many nuances that uh, are that dovetail, that connect with, that are the result of these things, both in terms of the way we think and what we do. But, you know, that's definitely a good place to start. Yeah. Well, let's let it percolate for a few more months, and then uh, maybe we can do another interview. Yeah, let's go into depth. Absolutely, man. Sometime, sometime probably in August. <laughs> <laughs> the pace of things going, but time goes by really fast anyway. Yes. That's nice. All right, Mark, thanks very much for joining us today. Really appreciate it, and thanks for listening, everybody. Mm-hmm.